Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when and where you are. Uh, welcome to another Festival in the Box 2.0 tasting session. Um, delighted to say I am speaking to Teddy Joseph from Edrington Beam Suntory Distillers. Uh, he's one of their whiskey specialists um, who would normally be going around the country talking about their wonderful brands. Um, but I'm going to bring Teddy in just now, and he's going to talk to us uh, about the Highland Park 10-year-old expression. So if you've got that to hand, grab a glass and let's go. Right. Teddy, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Eddie? Uh, all the better for seeing you and for having a glass of delicious Highland Park in front of me. Oh, very good. <laughs> now listen i i've met you uh, on a, a number of occasions but um um a number of the viewers might not have so it'd be good to just sort of introduce yourself and and let the good folks at home know what what you do with ebs and um uh, how you got to be doing what you're doing yeah so um hello everyone um i'm teddy from edgerton beam i'm tory a whiskey specialist for the for the group um or a brand ambassador we cover all our, our portfolio brands um but i have a particular affinity to highland park as a brand champion um and i basically do education um i go around and speak to consumers um speak to people in the hospitality industry uh, as well and educate them on our brands and i got into this role via hospitality. I've been in hospitality for about 20 years, working in bars, managing bars, owned a bar previously for a short brief uh, period of time, um, and then moved into repping for brands and doing sales, and then found my passion in education and talking about brands and helping make people really believe and resonate with the brands that we have. So um, slowly progressed into brand ambassadorship and uh, working with brands. Brilliant stuff. Well, it's always good to have good educators in the industry. It's a, such an important role. Mm -hmm, definitely. Think, you know. So, how long? How long have you been doing the educational role? Um, with Edmonton, uh, being some Tory, five years. Two weeks ago, I was uh, notified by the company actually, uh, wow. which uh, time has flown, and uh, that was ridiculous. I was like, five years. Um, but yeah. before that, probably another two years before that, when I was um, in Australia um, working for an events company out there in Sydney, and we had a contract working with uh, brands from Diageo, so I was right. doing a lot of education for them. So that's where I kind of found my my path, yeah. really, and what I wanted yeah. to do in the hospitality industry. Oh, that's tr tremendous. Well, keep up the good work. Um, anyway, you're here to um, talk about a specific bottling, which the guys and gals at home should have in their pack, which is the Highland Park 10 years old, which yeah. we know has been available in other parts of the world, but only just in the UK. Is that right? Yeah, so it hasn't been a massive focus um, for us in the UK until, uh, until recently. Um, we've had this expression in our portfolio for several years now. Um, what we have here is our 10-year-old, Highland Park 10-year-old Viking Scars expression. Um, the subheading Viking Scars uh, is a nod to the ancestry that we have in our home, in our origin of Orkney, the islands of Orkney. So um, they were once ruled and settled by uh, Viking kingdoms over a thousand years ago, and they've left an indelible mark uh, across the island and the people. And obviously our distillery and the founding father and the people that work there and still reside in Orkney. So this is just a little nod to that history, that, that subheading. Um, it's taken from um, nine noble virtues that were prevalent during the Norse time, historically, um, and one of them would have been courage. So the scars is kind of a nod to the courage. So 10-year-old uh, is, um, or Highland Park is matured in uh, exclusively sherry casks that we use. Uh, made of European oak and American oak. Um, what separates this from the 12-year-old, which many people probably know, is uh, we're using um, a slightly more proportion of our American oak um, in the makeup of this expression. Um, I'm a massive sherry fan. Um, I love sherried whiskies. And the majority of sh uh, sherried whiskies um, lead with European oak casks so they deliver a little bit more intensity a bit more color depth um, we talk about dried fruit we talk about 
um, orange zest and a lot of spice. But when you have sherry cask made from American oak, you bring a little lightness in, a little bit of softness. So that's what we should hopefully find with the 10-year-old. This is just a little bit more uplifting than the 12. So have you got your dram with you? I have indeed. Awesome. So if we have a look at that color, you've got the lovely light. I've got a lovely skylight here. This is mm -hmm. lovely light, light gold um, in color. Highland Park is 100% natural color. Um, if anyone didn't know, so we get all that color from the cast that we use. It's very important to us. Um, our maturation and wood policy is paramount, so we're very proud to be offered be able to offer, you know, 100% um, colored expressions from the casks. So, if you have a little nose of this, I don't know what jumps out at you with this, Eddie. Well, what firstly jumps out at me is the alcohol which is it, it feels a lot more than the 40 percent which is advertised okay. on the but then i'm getting kind of burnt toast and marmalade marmalade is a great one i mm -hmm. when i first know this i get hints of apricot so maybe an apricot marmalade mm. um, yeah yeah I'm going to add a little bit of water to mine. I'm not sure whether you, you're going to do the same. Just I have some water on the side. I might add after I've had that first initial sip. Mm -hmm. But yeah, followed by that apricot, I get lovely citrus notes, more kind of lemon, love sort of burnt lemon citrus notes. And there's a little bit of spice and there's that aromatic smoke, that signature smoke that we usually find at High, with Highland Park. Mm -hmm. This is a slightly peated whiskey. Yeah. And then on the on the palate. Mm. I love that. The yeah. lovely weight, the mouthfeel. It's got a lovely there's more more of that apricot um, aromas coming across on the palate. There's a hint of ginger, a sweet spice, and then you've got that lovely, subtle, aromatic smoke just sort of coming from the back to the front. Mm -hmm. um, and in comparison to the 12, the 12 has definitely got more orange notes, orange zest, winter spices coming through on that. This one just seems to be a bit more uplifting for me, a bit more vibrant. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I love it as a new entrant into our Excuse, especially in the UK, that we've got the ten-year-old now. That because not everyone is um, a big sherry fan. It's predominantly European oak and American oak just gives us some lighter notes, softer notes. We get a bit of um, creaminess coming through, like creamy vanilla, clotted cream. So it's just a bit lighter, and it can help introduce people to the expressions that we have when we build up, leading as we get older across the range into those sort of European oak and the the darker colour and darker intensity of fruits and flavours. Yeah, yeah. I must admit, I need to do a like an AB with the 10 versus the 12, because I remember trying this 10-year-old mm. a couple of years ago and being really surprised at how much I really liked it. Well, I shouldn't be too surprised, because I <laughs> generally, generally love Highland Park. Um, but I, for me, I feel it's just got a little bit more punch than the 12-year-old. Um mm -hmm. I love the 12 year old and i think it's on really solid form at the minute but i think that 10 is just and particularly for you know the the money you know it's not it's not you're not asking for a huge amount for that it's it's not it's at all yeah i think i think you're 100 percent correct i think adding that drop of water just there as well mm. brought out a few more of the spicy notes coming through mm -hmm. and as you were talking about the spiritus nature it for me it's it's almost a bit more livelier Mm -hmm. It's a bit more, and, and obviously it's 10 years old in comparison to 12, a bit more youthful, mm -hmm. a bit more vibrant, yeah. kind yes. of sort of dances across the palette, which I really like. So, yeah, oh, and perfect for the weather that we're enjoying just now as well. <laughs> exactly. And obviously the, the younger age, you would expect maybe the, the phenols, the smokiness to display themselves a little more, which I find, which maybe adds mm -hmm. to the punchiness. 
And I think that little drop of water also emphasizes the smokiness as it does with a lot of smoky drams. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's, um, yeah, I think just a few drops of water is, is, is definitely the way ahead. And it's yeah. a crack, cracking little dram. Out of a little more. Yeah, skull. Mm. Skull, um, Schlanger. Um, okay, well, listen, while um, we are and the good folks at home are enjoying that, um, why don't you tell us a, a little bit um, about the distillery itself? Because obviously it's one of the oldest operating distilleries in Scotland. Um, so it has a, an awful lot of history behind it. So let's see how, how long it takes you to, <laughs> to condense all that down. <laughs> yeah, so um, <clears throat> 1798 is our founding year. Um, on Orkney, we're the most northerly whiskey distillery uh, in Scotland. Um, only becoming part of Scotland uh, in uh, 1468. As I said earlier, we were once governed by Viking kingdoms, um, and it was uh, uh, gifted over as part of a dowry of the uh, king of Denmark and Norway. Um, their uh, daughter was marrying into King of Scotland's son at the time, so there was an exchange of of land, of property, to pay for that dowry, and that's how it became part of Scotland. Um, but our founding father, a gentleman called Magnus Jensen, um, was one such of these Viking descendants, who um, was a church officer by day, butcher by day, um, and under the cover of darkness, he was an illegal whiskey maker, and he was a smuggler. And our distillery um, is in the high park above the capital of Orkney, which is Kirkwall, which is where we get our name from, the High Park. Somewhere along the line became Highland Park. Um, and Magnus operated from there well before 1798. Um, that was just the time he was actually caught um, by the tax collectors. Um, and from that vantage point, he could see potential customers coming off the boats in the harbour that could be coming up to see him for some whiskey or potential threats in the taxman and uh legend has it that because he worked for the church if any tax collectors came about he could um sufficient sufficient sufficiently hide his whiskey uh in the church under the pulpit or maybe even in a coffin um and tell tax collectors that were snooping about that maybe someone had just died of the plague whereby they would uh scarper quickly onto the nearest boat leaving leaving the islands um so it's a beautiful distillery i don't know any of you've been up um in your time no not yet not yet this is um i'm maybe biased here but totally one of my favorite distilleries once you get up there once you get onto the island mm. it is magical it is very compact um distillery but so beautiful breathtaking you fall in love with that, you fall in love with the people, you fall in love with the islands. Um, it's one of the few distilleries I've visited that has exceeded my expectations, um, which is it, it's phenomenal. Um, yeah. And I just love going up every time. So Yeah, we, we got close actually with a family camper van holiday a couple of weeks ago and we, we got as far as uh, Thurso and John O'Groats, but we did, just didn't quite have the time to get the ferry up to Orkney, which which next time i will definitely make time to do um because it's definitely on my wish list bucket list if you like to get to all mm -hmm. and and go to highland park yeah you've got to do it it's absolutely yeah. breathtaking uh, it's in the post yeah. don't, it's in the post <laughs> um that's great well yeah i mean obviously it's a it's great to hear the stories of uh you know 18th century and, and earlier um it's just just a different, different, um, obviously a different time, but oh, yeah. the, the way things were done and, and <laughs> Vikings plundering and all this kind of stuff, you know. It's, it's, yeah, and, 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 and I love that, that you mentioned that the Vikings, you know, they, they <clears throat> obviously coming across from Denmark and Norway, this was the first stop. Orkney was a great vantage point for them mm. to then carry on into Scotland and into England um, mm. with their plundering. Um, but they're very, the Vikings were very much community driven, they're adventurers and they were craftsmen as well. So that's what we like to focus on with Highland Park is that actual community 
um, the craftsmanship, obviously the quality of our whiskey, we like to think that, you know, that is, is carrying on that tradition, those Viking traditions um, across, you know, the people that live on Orkney, a third of them can trace their ancestry back to the Viking era. Um, and as I said, there's, there's an indelible mark across the island. So people are proud of their heritage. And that's one such facet that we like to sort of dial up and talk about as the community, the craftsmanship, and yeah. the, the adventurousness, the adventurous spirit that they have. Yeah, oh, that's, that's great. I mean, it's very important that um you know you, you always respect and and uh, tap into the history of the of the place as you know as you as you have done very successfully um just i, I know i know i could probably name some myself but particular quirks at highland park to the production process that <clears throat> um that makes the, the 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 distillery stand apart from other single malt distilleries have you got have you got some uh, tidbits for us there yeah, we, um, well, I do, I, we talk about five keystones of production um, and that we are using these five keystones collectively and no other distillery does that. So it does set us apart, makes us, you know, a, a whiskey that's not replicated. Um, we talk about our aromatic peat uh, coming from Hobbiston Moor, which is our peat bog. Um, this aromatic peat is composed of a lot of uh, heather shrubbery. Um, unlike peat bogs that you would find in mainland Scotland or even on Isla, um, there are no trees that can make up our peat. So uh, we don't get a woody smokiness. We like to talk about a floral aromatic peat smoke that we get. Um, then we talk about hand-turned floor maltings, the second keystone. Um, we're one of a um, few distilleries that still operate these traditional practices of hand-turning um, our malt. Um, we still have traditional malting floors and we have two kilns that are still in operation. So we're very proud of that fact. And so once we've flavoured our barley with our aromatic, um, oh, once we've uh, soaked the barley and we've let it germinate for a time on our malting floors, we would then transfer it to the kilns to then employ that aromatic peat, peat smoke to flavour the barley. And then we talk about um, the casks that we use, sherry casks, sherry season casks that deliver up to 60% of the flavor, 100% of the natural color. Um, we have a very stringent wood policy, Highland Park. Um, we oversee the construction of casks that we are gonna use. We don't use secondhand casks or secondhand sherry casks. Um, so we will oversee the construction of casks from trees that have been felled that we've purchased and have been air dried and seasoned and then coopered into big butts or punchins, 500 liters, and then season with Oloroso sherry for a period of time, usually about 18 months, before having those casks delivered to our distillery to be filled with our new make spirit. Um, that wood policy is a, a journey that, like I say, we go from acorn to glass. Um, nobody else in the industry has that much attention to detail with their, their wood policy. So that delivers a lot for our spirit. And then we talk about uh, cool uh, maturation climate that we have on Orkney, very temperate climate. Um, it can be anywhere from zero degrees to 12 degrees all year round. It's very, very temperate. Don't, we don't get the extremes that we do on the mainland. Um, so our cask will mature a very slow and even pace. Um, they don't soak into the wood as deeply. Um, so we have this gentle color that evolves over time. And obviously as the whiskies do get older, they get slightly darker in color. Um, and it just makes for a more harmonious expression at the end. And then we talk about cask harmonization, our fifth keystone. So it's a uh, part of the process that not many distilleries still employ, um, where when you bring together different whiskies to make an expression for a 10 year old or a a 12 year old, um, you will let that sit and marry. So those different whiskies, different masks can knit together and be more uh, harmonious. And we will let our expression sit for a minimum of two months prior to bottling, just so we get that fully rounded, um, cohesive flavor and aromas in the final product. So those are the five keystones that we employ. Um, Nobody else employs those five keystones. 
like we do. So we are very unique and that sets us apart from other other whiskies. Um, that's great. Thanks for filling us in on that. Um, so in terms of whilst we still continue to enjoy the strand, it's, mm. going, it's going down far too well. Um, <laughs> now, obviously, you've done a lot of um, different bottlings and, and bottling lines along the <clears throat> along the way um i just wanted to ask you about you know what what does the immediate future hold for highland park in terms of any expansion plans or new exciting bottlings anything like that coming down the track yeah um no expansion plans to to speak of um as you've already mentioned you know we've had a, a history of the last few years of producing quite a lot of expressions um with more of a nod towards our, <clears throat> excuse me, our Viking ancestry. Um, things like Valkyrie and Valknut have an expression here. You may have seen before, Highland Park Valkyrie. Um, again, nod to our Viking ancestry. Um, we are gonna pause on that, um, bringing out these expressions, um, these especially non-age ones, um, except for um our cask strength series i don't know if you've had a chance to try that eddie and it I, came out last year yes i did i had the first edition cask strength and uh was 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 very excited quite right yeah it, it's so exciting i think especially that first one it was 63.3 percent and <laughs> having a, personally for me when i first tried it i I was surprised at how delicate it was mm. at that ABV. I did not think it, it I, I thought it was a typo. I didn't think it was that strong. Mm -hmm. um, but that's probably just, I'm not sure if that's just me. Um, but no, yeah, it's. No, I thought it was, um, yeah, like you say, even at that very high ABV, it, it, it didn't come across aggressively at all. It was just very well balanced, especially obviously with quite a bit of water to balance it out. Mm. Um, but that bottle didn't last long, I can tell you that. No, neither did mine, which I'm a bit annoyed <laughs> about because I should have bought more and I didn't. And yeah. I was just like, oh. um, but we, we're going to have um, that second bat coming out this year. Great. Uh, which is very exciting. Um, but as I said, we're pausing on our sort of our Viking inspired expressions and we're sort of going to concentrate more on our aged expressions are 10 to 12 um and we're actually bringing in or bringing back our um 15 year old that we'd mm -hmm. um previously stopped producing for a few years mm -hmm. um which was a which was a fan favorite for some yeah. so we're actually we're actually bringing that back so that's some really exciting news and that should be coming out uh later this year so Great. um so yeah looking so forward to that with you bringing back um well two aged expressions to the uk anyway so the 10 and the 15 eventually um to join the 12 and the 18 and i think the 25. Um, we have the, the 21 the 25 and the 30 yeah yeah so does that mean um that the the aged stocks in the highland park warehouses have started to uh come back because obviously there was a time when um all well all, all scotch single malt distilleries were struggling mm. for, for, for stuff you know beyond 15 years old and yes. he hence why we saw a proliferation of non-age statement whiskies which is totally understandable and um you know doesn't mean they're, they're no good at all obviously um so does that mean that they're recovering at the at the warehouses Slowly but surely, yeah, we, we, yeah. The, the, the fifteen is a, a massive indication of that, a massive mark of the fact that you know mm -hmm. that, that stock is now you know slowly building back up. And what the fifteen-year-old does is it also it kind of dove dovetails with the the ten-year-old in that fifteen-year-old of old and, and the new one coming in should be leading with a bit more of that American oak sherry season cask. Right. So what we have is the ten and the fifteen. And interspersed, we have the 12 and the 18 that kind of lead with the more European oak, um, mm -hmm. which is great to have. So if people, because I say not everyone's a big European oak sherry fan, um, mm -hmm. but they might like the American style, the American-led style. So the 10 and the 15 can hopefully be those ones that maybe 
people gravitate towards more if that's their style, that's their flavor profile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Well, that's good to hear. Um, now, just before we finish, um, in terms of the current state of the whiskey industry as a whole internationally, um, you know, what, is there anything that particularly excites you or, or even concerns you at the moment? You know, <clears throat> what, what do you think? I, th I think, um, obviously, the, the last year has been um, quite sobering for the industry, for people's lives. Um, but whiskey has, it has been a constant, it has had its struggles. Um, and I'm just excited really to start to see as we, we open up the world again, um, people start to travel, we start to get on top of the, the, the you know, the pandemic, um, that people could start enjoying our expressions, they can start traveling, they can start visiting our distillery. Um, and people could start, you know, enjoying new expressions that we'll have out there. Um, obviously with the lack of travel, global travel retail has been hugely affected. Um, so having that um, avenue of, of, of exploration open again will be great for our brands and whiskey, um, whiskey industry as a whole. Um, um, I'm excited to see what we still do with um, our online presence as well, because obviously during this time, People have been uh, tuning in to things online and experiencing things online, and I think that's going to continue. Um, I mean, why why shouldn't it? Because we've seen how it gives you more access, um, or it allows people across the world more access. So, even if we look at um, recently, the Fish Isle uh, Isla Festival has just happened online, um, and how people could tune into that and not all. The whiskey show of, of last year and how people could actually tune into that and you actually could garner more people um interacting with the whiskey show globally because it was online rather than in person and people having to travel uh to london and to the uk so i think the passion and the intrigue for whiskey is always going to be there i think it's now that we're as i say coming out of this this tough time i think people are going to run to it with open arms and embrace it i think we're going to see a explosion of um sales of whiskey um um with new expressions and and new things being developed um i think the industry as a whole is in a good place i think it's going to be in a good place and i'm excited for it so mm. bring it on Bring it on. Yeah, exactly. Bring on the live events again. That's what we say. 100%. Um, yeah, well, Teddy, hopefully in the, in the months to come, we'll get to get together and have a beer or a dram or something. Uh, that, that's Most that's, definitely. That's my main wish. Um, but for now, listen, it's been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on and telling us about the Highland Park and the and the 10-year-old expression in the Festival in a Box. Um, so I would say to you, Sir Slanjavar, and, uh, or as we say, an Orkney skull. Oh, and uh, thank you for having me. No, my pleasure. And um, thanks to the viewers at home. Hope you enjoyed the session. Um, and go and do another one. Um, <laughs> so Kenny, thank you once again. And hopefully see you very soon. Thank you. Take care.